I swear to God, Draco Super C looks and fights like a bizarro version of fucking Jules St. Pierre. So whatever you like in Jules St. Pierre, the suaveness, the sleekness, you know, the timing, you know, the perfection, Draco's doesn't have that. It's kind of all over the place, but it works. It fucking works, bro. Because that guy, I don't know if he was, I don't know if he was faking it. I don't know if he was faking it. He could be, he could be doing that whole like drunken monkey thing, right? Right, where you like, you know, you pretend. Maybe he was faking it. But when I tuned in on round two or three, he looked tired. He looked like if you pushed him over, he might not get back up again. He looked so tired, but still he was coming forward. Left hook, um, big looping right hand, fucking body kicks, uh, leg kick to the leading leg. Still giving Izzy things to worry about. I was like, wow, how is he doing this? How does he look like, how does he look like he just ran a marathon and then he's still able to punch and to kick? How? How? But the most concerning thing for me in that fight, as a black man, as an African man, I saw a nigga give up, which is, which is understandable. Given Izzy's run and given the amazing fights he's given us, I did see a nigga give up. I saw a nigga give up because the way Drakers took his back, that sequence, yes, it was, you know, smooth and whatever, but that wasn't high-level BJJ. Let's not lie. That wasn't high-level grappling or BJJ. That was some basic shit that you do to, like, to people like me, to, like, non-white... No, I'm not even a white belt. I just come in and you just exalt you know me. I mean, bop, bop, trip me up, take my back, bop, boom. boom. That, like, that's something that you do to, like, a guy who's off the street. He made Izzy look like some... And and that, for me, felt more like Izzy gave up. Now, again, Dracos is a fucking killer because he's tired and his body went into fucking autopilot. As soon as he got the trip, got the back, boom, bam, boom. It was over. I love that about him. Like, he doesn't... He's very effective. He doesn't waste time, right? Even though you could kind of say... But whatever, you know what I mean. W when he smells blood, Dracos do perceive... He fucking goes for the win. UFC is a very infuriating sport, innit? Because I swear to God, it was just the other year. Izzy was like spanking man. Just the other year, just a few months ago, Izzy was banning man up. He did the unthinkable. He beat fucking Alex Pereira in the rematch. And then suddenly it fucking flips. And now he's looking washed. And I was thinking about myself today. I was thinking about myself this. I was thinking to myself this, right? You know what's funny about the UFC? Because people say it's like compounding damage, right? Over time, you know, the body just like can't take it anymore. And maybe you lose the hunger, whatever it may be. But I was thinking to myself, you know what's funny? If Robert Whittaker was to face Israel Desanya now, I'm confident Robert Whittaker beats Izzy. Even though Robert, even though Izzy absolutely demolished Robert Whittaker when he faced him you know, what was it, 18 months ago or so. So somehow, Robert Whittaker went through like a bad patch in his career where he was getting beaten up and shit. Then he gets back on form. And now the guy that was champion is looking like he can't get back on form. How? How? <laughs> how? How is that possible? Please someone tell me how that's possible. How does the UFC work like that? I don't get it. It's so fucking, it's such a, it's such a hard sport to fucking predict, really. And maybe it's a hard sport to manage as an athlete. Like, when do you really bow, like, when do you bow as an athlete? When do you decide to kind of hang up? Because sometimes, if you don't hang it up quick enough, the game can come for you quickly, and by the time you realize what's going on, you've already lost like three in a row, five in a row. So I'm going to Izzy's record now, right? Let's go through Izzy's record, because to me, I'm just shocked by how like quick this has happened. But let's go through Izzy's record quickly. Well, let's say Izzy's record from like, let's say 2020. Oh my God, look at that. Look at those wins. God almighty. Let's do, tw oh what? Hold on, Robert Whittaker was 2019. Oh no, okay, cool, 2022, cool. My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. Cool, cool, okay. Let's do 2020. So March 2020, beats your Romero, your, your Romero. Not the best fight, beats him. Paulo Costa, impressive victory. He went up in weight class against Jan, Jan Bavovic. And to be fair, he was outclassed, but still takes a lot of guts, a lot of fucking courage to do that sort of thing. Because Jan was massive compared to him. Great grappling. Like, it was a bit of a, um, you know, uneven fight in that respect. Uh, Vittori, I, think, I thought he beat the brakes off personally. Robert Whittaker beat the brakes off personally. Um, Jared Cannonier made him look average personally. 
he's you know I don't I'm not really that a big fan of Jared Karanir, but still he beat him up. Alex Pereira got absolutely demolished. Alex Pereira the second time it was a tight fight and he got the knockout. I wouldn't say he was dominating, but it was a tight fight. He got the knockout, but he did come back. It was like his that was like his own personal boogeyman, right? He'd been beating him in like what's that kick kickboxing thing they were in before? You know, he'd been you know he's kind of been that guy that's always been in the back of his mind that always has his number. So he beat Alex Pereira, and then suddenly. You're facing Sean Strickland, who a lot of people would say is probably not as good as a fighter as Alex Pereira. He's probably, you know, I don't know. He probably occupies that same Drakers Duplessis C category where they just don't look aesthetically pleasing, but they're really effective fighters. And then he gets absolutely spanked. Sean Strickland absolutely spanked my guy Izzy. Like, it was so sad. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I felt sadder watching Izzy get beat by Sean Strickland than I did him see him get subbed by Drakers Duplessis. Because I'm a I'm an I was a non Sean Strickland believer. I didn't know he was that good. So it hurt my feelings seeing this guy just like stand there and box Izzy's face off. Just keep moving towards him, not give him any space the entire fight. It hurt my feelings because you could see Izzy's soul break. Like Sean Strickland broke Izzy's soul. Draco Duper C, I think I thought was a even though maybe maybe Izzy was losing on the cards. I'm not too sure I, I didn't see it. But you know, he had some good moments in the Draco Super C fight before he got subbed. You know, he could, he could probably rationalize that a lot better because, you know, mistakes happen. He probably turned turned his back. He let fucking Draco get some shots in, took his back too easily, blah, 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 blah. But that Sean Strickland fight for me was the big warning signal about his Izzy's career. Like, what the fuck is going on? Why is he, why does he, why is he look like that? How does, it, how did the guy that beat Alex Pereira the way he did look like this against somebody that people wouldn't think would hang without his prayer in the fight. What's going on here? It makes no sense. Like, in my mind, it makes no sense. I'm sure that UFC people who really analyze the sport can tell me that they probably saw signs of Izzy falling off and not being the guy from Robert Whittaker times, probably. But from my lame man terms, UFC fighters, they make no sense. <laughs> like, they make no sense. Like, now he's, like, on the brink of retiring. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what is going on? What is going on? Honestly, what the fuck is going on? This man might be on the brink of retiring. How? How, Sway? How? But, yo. Yeah, big up Dylan B. But, yes, congrats to Draco's Duplessis, man. Congrats to Draco's Duplessis. Because no matter what you say, no matter what I say, no matter how much I dislike his style, that guy can fight. Let's be fair. That motherfucker can fucking fight. And let's go through fucking Draco Super C's record. That guy can fucking fight. That ability to just keep swinging and banging and hitting your opponent and giving them all sorts of problems. Kicks, punches, takedowns while you're gassed out. Come on. Look at that record. Come on. Look at that record. Since he's been in the UFC, he hasn't lost. Since he's been in the UFC, he has not lost since he's been in the UFC. To be fair, I think his best, I think his best performance. Yeah, might have been Robert might have been Darren Till, you know. Like absolute damaging. He battered that he battered Darren Till. Yeah, he battered Darren Till. That might have been one of the fights that led to Till like quote unquote retiring for the UFC. <sighs> Dracus is a fucking Dracus is an animal, man. Dracus is an animal. That nigga is a fucking animal. He's a tough motherfucker. He's an awkward motherfucker. And no one seems to be able to get his number. Really and truly. He's hard one to approach. Yeah, big up Dilly, D, D, big up D, D -Land, D -Land B. Big up D -Land B. It's an old tired expression. It's hard to get up and train in satin sheets. Do you think that's it though? Do you think that's it? Do you think that's all, do you think that's the main issue? When when you're a champion, because I think the UFC set up that way, right? With the pay. It's fucking shit. But if you're a champion, you get paid well. You earn a lot from like endorsements and shit. You earn a lot from like sponsorships and shit. You get better cuts and shit. You get better rates just in general. So you get better pay overall. So do you think that's it? Do you think these guys go from making like a hundred grand a year, then suddenly making like two mil per fight, if not more, and things change very quickly. <laughs> now suddenly going to run a 5K every other day doesn't seem like the most fun thing to do. Suddenly now go and do two a days. Doesn't seem like that fun to do. <laughs> I think Dil maybe Dylan's right, you know. You go from making like minimum wage 
after you paid all because imagine 100 grand per year for UFC fight probably isn't enough per year after you paid all your trainers and your gym your gear blah 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 you go from making that to making like 5 mil you buy yourself a nice car you maybe you might you maybe pay off the mortgage for your parents you get yourself a condo in Miami you start fucking some OnlyFans girls maybe a couple of ring card girls you get on a podcast, you get good sponsorship from like Price Pick or something for your podcast. They're paying you now, they're paying you now 30 grand a month, something that you were making per year. They're giving you per month from a podcast that you do once per fucking month with your best friend or something. You got a YouTube channel. And I think it is is his YouTube channel. Is his YouTube channel? Figure this out. <laughs> is his YouTube channel from AdSense probably makes just as much amount of money. As probably he first made fighting in the UFC. He does that from the comfort of his home in New Zealand. Surrounded by his brother and his friends. Just watching fights, critiquing and whatever. Ooh. Oh, wow. Look at that. Mr. Mister Bob. Is he owns... Okay, cool. Dylan is right. Dylan B, I apologize. You're 100% right. Is he owns 19 properties in New Zealand. On top of everything else that he does. He's very media... What do you call it? Uh, he's good at that media game. He, get, he goes on a lot of podcasts. People want to have him on, you know? So I wonder, maybe that's the cause. Maybe that is part of the game. But I also think, I also think aside from that, I also think aside from that, champions just don't have a long run in the UFC, like really and truly. You don't really have that long of a run. Especially if you're, especially because the UFC, unlike any other like combat fight organization and shit, they don't let you get away with like, like dumb fights. Like you have to fight the best all the time. You have to consistently defend your belt against the best all the fucking time. And I think that is probably the reason why we don't get champions hanging around for ages. Because the best are... Co even, the, even the guy that you beat, okay, he goes back to the drawing board. He gets a free he gets a free fight win streak. Cool. Some prospect, free fight win streak. Some guy from another promotion, free fight win streak. Everybody's like chomping at a bit to take your head off. Because they also know that's where the money's at. You become champion... Even one, even even if you defend it once, that can change your life completely. Or maybe, or maybe, let's entertain this conversation. Or maybe, let's entertain this conversation. Maybe Izzy was never that good. That's another hard one to have. Maybe Izzy wasn't as good as we thought he was. Maybe we overhyped some of the finishes. Maybe we overhyped some of the fight. I don't think so personally, but I'm just questioning everything because my head can't like, you know, <laughs> my head couldn't make sense of what I was seeing on my laptop screen I was seeing one guy that looked like he was tired but he was still fighting well and going forward then I saw another guy that was look, doing all the things to look like he was good like stand here and fight stand here and fight and then 20 seconds later he's getting choked like how does like, you know what I mean stand here and fight and then 20 seconds later he's getting choked like what <laughs> nothing makes sense nothing makes sense in the fight world man Nothing makes sense in the fight world. I swear to God. But congrats to Dragos Duplessis. Congrats to him. I'm I'm eager to see his next fight now. I'm eager to see if he's going to develop or improve. I'm eager to see what um if somebody's got an answer to what he does. So far, we haven't seen it. So that's going to be curious to see how he how he how he's able to kind of defend against somebody having the answer against him. If he gets tested, really, uh, you know, because I also feel like I feel like he's had like close fights, but I don't feel like he's been tested, tested, you know. That's the thing as well. So he might be a formidable champion because I don't think he's been like properly tested. I don't. I don't feel like he's had to go into the deep waters to really win. He's had tight fights, but I don't think he's been tested really. So I'm curious to see who's gonna end up doing that for him. But big up Adrian uh, Duplessis. It was also nice. It was also nice. It was also nice to see um them make up at the end. Really beautiful because there there was a lot of like venom. Um, a lot of like mean things said to each other, but you know, I hope uh, it's just fight game promotion shit. Just get over it, whatever it may be. So that was good to see. Um, and obviously, um, they went through this little song and dance where Izzy gave Drake a customized jacket, I think, as well. Let me play that video for you quickly. The little, this little jacket that Izzy gave to uh, what is it? Let's see. Drake has duplicated Israel share an incredible backstage moment after UC 305 and embrace each other's families. I know you're on the longest part. Just hold yourself. Oh, this one, this one's from. Enjoy. Have a good one. Enjoy celebration. Let's go, boys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
<laughs> that, that's nice, man. That's nice, isn't it? That's nice to see. I'm not going to lie. That's nice to see. Good to see the makeup and everything's okay to a certain extent. Do you know what I mean? That's nice to see. That is nice to see. What are you guys telling me in the stream chat? What are you guys telling me in the stream chat? Izzy still can't solve the f <laughs> the, f the Sean Strickland problem. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, big up Keso Moses. Well gone, my guy. I hope he gets the hungriest, healthiest version of Kamza. Yeah, one can only hope. One can only hope, my friend. I think losing to Strickland broke him. It was a fight that was supposed to win. Yeah, very good point, Dylan. And he went into that. I'm a big Izzy fan, but I think he went into that too confident, too cocky. He took Sean Strickland too lightly. He was talking about the fights after the after Sean Strickland's like, bro, like the UFC is not a joke league. You have to approach everybody with respect. Like you have to, you know, and just in general, anyway, in the fights, you have to just whoever your opponent is, respect them, win that fight, and then deal with the person after the fact. Easy to that fight too lightly, and Sean Strickland made him fucking pay. Um, Shades, Shades Carl, Izzy had a long streak. Yep. We did it though. Anderson Silva, John Jones, GSP. Oh, no. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I think nowadays, my friend, I think that's what I'm saying. I think nowadays, I think nowadays, I think now, I think now just to come, there's just like, um, maybe I'm talking my ass, but I think it's just, I think it's just stronger competition across the board in most weight classes. There's just strong competition, you know? And there's just fighters finding like their second or third wind. So it's kind of hot, like no one's really down and out really. They just need a good couple of runs to win and then suddenly they're back to challenging you for the title again. And you have to then go again into the fucking deep well to try and defend yourself. So I, I think maybe in the past, those champions like Addison Silva, John Jones and GSP were long lasting champions because I don't think the standard of fighters was as good as it is now. Because maybe the standard of the fighters isn't like world class as it once was. Like there's not a lot of world class champions. But I think overall, everyone's on like the same-ish level. On their day, anyone could be anybody, if that makes sense. That's why I feel like in the UFC roster now. I feel like the UFC roster is the most balanced it's been. There's no, like, person who's, like, head and shoulders above anybody. It's like everybody's kind of, like, you know, if you fuck up and you lose concentration, anybody can fuck it, you know, can turn your lights off, essentially. But I could be wrong. Big up Draco Stuplessy, and let's see what what Israel does. He did announce at the end of the fucking fight that he's not he's not leaving. And um, that was pretty funny to see him do that because I think everyone was assuming he's going to retire. So I guess, you know, he kind of turned that around. So big up to him for doing that. Big up to him for doing that.